Hey guys, Shane here, Echo Soundworks, and in this video, we'll be checking out the new features in the Logic 10 10.4.2 update. So I'm gonna keep this intro short because I wanna dive in and start checking out the features and show you guys how to use them. But in short, the main kind of cliff notes of the coolest new features include Alchemy getting a facelift, uh, there's some really cool new alchemy features, so it'll be easier to interact with the synth using custom imported samples, that sort of stuff. And then Apple's also expanded the functionality of the smart tempo feature, which was unveiled in the last big update. So it can now work with MIDI and it can handle multiple files at once, which is kind of cool. And also I think the next kind of big thing that they added for me personally was being able to relocate the sound library to an external hard drive, save space on my actual computer. Cause I don't use a lot of the Apple loops, but I'll sometimes use the EXS 24 stuff, you know, obviously Alchemy. And then lastly, Apple's added some new functionality and how you can set up pans and, and how you can set up sends, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna check all that out in the video. Let's get started. All right, so first up, we're gonna check out the update the updated features in Alchemy. So these are huge, I think, for anyone who makes hip hop, pop, EDM, whatever type of genre of EDM you make, because you like working with samples more than likely, right? So dragging and dropping and working with samples in Logic hasn't historically been easy. It's still not the best. Uh, Ableton's way better at handling that task, but the new update to Alchemy makes it a little bit better. So previously, if you wanted to import samples into Alchemy, you'd go File, Initialize your preset, which we'll do now. Then you'd have to go to your Advanced tab, click on a source, click Import Audio, drag the sample onto the drop zone, choose your analysis mode, go get a coffee, take a nap, and then hit Import. Well, now you don't have to do that. You can just drag and drop samples onto a source, and then you'll see four hot zones appear that will allow you to choose what analysis mode. Analysis mode meaning what type of playback engine you're essentially using. Is it gonna be sample? Is it gonna be a sampler based playback engine, granular, spectral, or additive, right? So let's uh, just quickly add a reverb. So I'm gonna pull in a sample from Sphere. We're gonna choose the Rattle Marimba. So I'm just gonna click and drag, and you can see that all four sources highlight, right? We can see that we can put this on any of the four sources, A, B, C, or D. Think of these as kind of like your oscillators. You also have the option to choose between additive, spectral, granular, and sampler. I'm gonna hit sampler for now. And we are ready to go. Now the cool thing about this is how easy it is to blend the different modes together, right? So we can take the same sample, let's go to source B, and instead of choosing sampler, let's try, let's try additive. And I'm gonna turn off source A so you can hear the difference. So let's blend these two sources together. So another feature that's been added to Alchemy is actually a GUI uh, enhancement, and it's a big one. Um, I don't know if you guys realize this. If you guys haven't updated yet and you've checked out this video before you update, take note of this because it's pretty crazy. See how I'm not using sources C and D? and all the controls are grayed out, right? When you turn a source on, they become less less opaque, right? Or more opaque, not sure how that works. <laughs> Someone will correct me on that, but the colors, everything, you actually see it more clearly. The old version of Alchemy did not do that. It would just basically be like, everything would be the same, except the C or this D or the B or the A wouldn't be highlighted in blue. That was it. So that's actually a pretty big enhancement. I think it makes it easier to work with the synth. And then finally, uh, you can double click and in certain parameters, you have numerical editing. So you can double click and type things in. If you want to type in 18,000 hertz, boom, you're at 18,000 hertz, which is nice for making very precise surgical adjustments to various parameters. All right, so next up, we're going to check out the three new enhancements to the smart tempo feature inside of Logic 10. So if you guys uh, haven't used the Smart Tempo, you have been living under a rock. Smart Tempo is great. It basically allows you to drag and drop loop samples into Logic and have it snap to your grid without having to do anything. You just click, simply go up here to uh, Smart Tempo Project Settings. And if you're dragging and dropping samples or loops or whatever it might be, you go align bars or align bars and beats. And then you can also do that with recording. So if, 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 a reco if you're recording an acoustic guitarist or a vocalist, you can have it on and it will actually start to quantize the audio to your, to your session's BPM, which is great. So one of the new features is you, it, the Smart Tempo now works with MIDI that's not recorded with a metronome. So we're not going to look at that feature in this video, but it's pretty self-explanatory, right? 
um, I'm going to look at a really cool feature. So previously, if you were working with, like, say, a construction kit, I'm going to pull a construction kit from our pack sphere. And if you were importing the whole kit, it wouldn't analyze each individual file, right? Um, it would, you'd have to do it kind of like one at a time to actually get to keep the tempo. So this kit is at 135 beats per minute. Our session tempo is at 130. So I have selected in the smart tempo project settings, set imported audio files to, it's basically on, it's gonna align them, right? So we're gonna take all nine of these files, drag and drop. We're gonna hit create new tracks and it's going to analyze all of them. So you can see all of them are perfect length, right? There's no overhang at the end of a bar or anything. So let's check it out. All right, so this is a pretty cool feature because this was something that a lot of people struggled to do if they wanted to, and that was relocate the, the, the sound library that comes with Logic 10 to an external drive to save space on their actual machine. So what you can do is now you can go up to Logic Pro X or where it says Logic Pro 10, scroll down to sound library, and then you're gonna simply select relocate sound library. Now you wanna make sure that you have your external hard drive plugged in obviously, because it will automatically find one that's there. You'd select it and hit relocate, it's that simple. All right, so next up, we're gonna check out the new send fader, as well as some new options that you have with how to deal with pans when you're working with the send and an aux. So I have created a bus and on that bus it's being sent to an aux track that has some reverb, right? So Let's apply it to this clap. Just get that loop a little bit cleaner there. So we just have a clap, right, with some reverb. Makes sense. So if we go into our into our mixer, our mix channel here, we can actually click on the bus and now choose independent pan. Our rotary knob will change color, letting us know that it's an independent pan. So now I can change the pan of the bus and the send independently from how you'd expect it to react if it were just set to the default configuration. And of course you can choose between the different pan modes, right? Stereo, balance, and binaural. So that's pretty cool. Now they've also added a fader, a sends on fader. So instead of using only being able to use this little rotary knob to control your send amount, you can change your fader on your channel and it will actually be the fader controlling the depth or the amount of the send, which is really cool. So you can access that a few different ways and, and you don't have to access it with this independent pan. It can be on the normal one. So you can go up here into your, you can uh, right click or click here and you can do sends on fader. And anytime you do sends on fader, that fade, the faders will turn into, uh, they'll turn into a little gold yellow knob. And you can see that in this session, I only have one appearing. That's because I only have one send set up. So this is huge. I mean, if you use any touch screen or if you want to, if you're working in sessions, we have a lot of sends, a lot of different buses. This is awesome because then you can just see them all at the same time and change the balance, right? You can also, we'll, we'll go back to here and uncheck sends on fader. You can also go to the top of your mixer and select the little icon for sends on fader. And you can even set up a key command, which I'm gonna do now because I could see myself using this feature quite a bit in the future. So I'm gonna go up to my menu, arrow over to key commands, select edit. We're just gonna type in send, that should pull it up. And it's right there, send on faders on and off. So I'm going to select learn by key label and let's do shift B. All right, so now if I wanted to open up my, my mixer and change it to sends on fader, we can hit, we can click on the bus, hit shift B and now it's there. So now I can control the depth of the reverb with the fader instead of the little rotary knob. All right, the last feature, in this update that I wanna check out in the video is the option to attach pictures into the notepad. So the notepad's actually really helpful. I, I, I'll use this to organize my thoughts, kind of get a to-do list within Logic. Um, I like having the to-do list on a session inside of Logic so I don't have my phone near me. Uh, if I have a to-do list on my phone, I could get distracted. Next thing I know, boom, 10 minutes down on Reddit or whatever, you know? So um, yeah, you can obviously type in, type in uh, a note here, but you can now, attach a picture, which I think is pretty cool. So let's say you're, I, I can see myself using this if I'm not, if I can't finish a session or I'm, I might wanna re-mic something, take a picture of how I mic'd a guitar or a drum set or whatever, and then put that in the notes, right? So just drag that, that picture in and I could say, you know, mic set up for it or whatever, and then it's there anytime I go back to it. 
All right, guys, that sums up the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like this video and want to see more like it, hit that like and subscribe button. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.